Hello, and welcome back to the DP World Tour Picks and Bets. Been a few weeks since I've seen you, my friend Tom Jacobs. How are you doing? It's pretty good. We've um, we've had some success winning golf tournaments, which hasn't been on the DP World Tour. So hopefully we can bring <laughs> that uh, good juju over to here. Um, you know, it's not been you know it's it's been a really weird schedule, hasn't it? Right, and it's not actually been that long in terms of tournaments since Thomas Peters won for us. So it's not like we're in a barren spur or anything like that. It's just there hasn't been any tournaments. Um, it does concern me, right? The, the way that we're playing right now and, and the tournaments that are getting lost and. If this Saudi Golf League does pick up it, and there's enough people that go over, there, there could be some real problems for the DP World Tour because I, I don't think the PGA Tour will be affected, but the, the DP World Tour is struggling right now without the, you know, the other tour in the mix. Yeah, it's we could spend hours probably talking on a, a different golf tour coming alive, and if it was to tr- just be a trickle down effect overall, yeah. You know, and I think these kind of events, you know, we we do things regardless of who's teeing it up. Um, right. There's a lot more people in the world that are going to tune in if there's not elite talents that are going to be on there, but that's where I think things are, are right for the taking on, on our end. So you're not going to see us go anywhere. Um, to your point, the last, I guess I would say 2022 has been great for the golf community. I mean, we're seeing winners hit at an yeah. unbelievable clip Every week. Yeah. to start the year. It's uh it's very uh, fun to be a part of the the journey on that. Like you said, Peters was a big hit for us to kick off this season. And now we welcome into, I think, my favorite event in all of golf. One one of the best ones. The <laughs> best name. The best name, Tom, of any golf yeah. event out there. And the best trophy, perhaps, too. I'm going to let you say it before I say the name of the tournament. What are you, what are you thinking? Well, it's not because of the name of the event or the trophy, is it, as to why oh, you love it so I much? Mean, I there mean, is another maybe, significant maybe factor. A, <laughs> I mean, maybe it's the home uh, of where Guido Migliazzi got his first European tour win at the time, but the magical Kenya Open is back. <laughs> Except we're not at Karen Country Club. Uh, that that course holds a special place in my heart forever. You know, the, the ball striking clinic that the young Italian kid put on to win that event, hitting the pin from the 18th fairway, you know, just – being lights out all weekend long you know that event and then there's another one on the european tour that no longer exists if not one two it'd be what they call the belgian knockout if you remember that event i think guido won that one too but those are the one two are my favorites um so it's good to be back in golf but it's really good to be back in kenya yeah and i think just a good disclaimer there is that as many sort of fans of the show have kind of reached out as we're back into the week, there's a lot of people saying it's guido week and that's all very exciting just remember this isn't the golf course that he won at. So as much as it could well be Guido week, and well, I'm sure we'll come on to that later, um, it's not the same venue. Yeah, we are going to be... So I, I watched uh, a... So it's it's Muthaiga, I think is the best way to pronounce it, my Muthaiga Golf Club. Watched a uh, kind of YouTube flyover. They used to play this on the Challenge Tour back, I think, 2018 or 2017 was the last time yeah, we saw 2018, it. Yeah, 2018 and 2017, yeah. Yeah, they're very similar and, and very tree-lined. Um, you know, I can think back to basically people were driving par fours all the time at Karen Country Club. This one isn't probably going to be as um, overtaken by power. Ben Coley wrote up that he's actually been to the course before, said around the green game is going to play into a little bit more of the factor. Always trust Ben's take to it. But I think still, you know, ball striking on these tree line type of courses, you got to keep it in the fairways. You got to hit the greens. You got to play well, I guess, around the green. But uh, if that's the best way you can kind of go at it versus over power, it's going to be slightly different than Karen Country Club. Yeah, I think so. I think I think that's a pretty fair assessment. This is like Ben is is well placed to give his uh, opinion on that. And I think I wouldn't I wouldn't let it put me off. Kind of like a, a big hitter. We kind of see every tournament now gets dispatched by a big hitter most of the time. So you know, I, I think that. You know, the obvious advantage is, is that they're really long with their driver. They can just club down and hit an iron and, and do it that way anyway, right? So um, it's certainly not a negative, but like you say, it may, maybe the method of victory is slightly different this time. Yep, yep. Um, and with that, I think we can really kind of uh, dive into uh, the overview. I mean, both of us are kind of, and I think this is something to, to hit on as you talked about just overall before we dive into the odds, is we're not seeing consistent play out of these guys we're having multiple breaks already to start the season um 
It makes me a tad conservative when looking at the top of the board or the odds board, just because there's going to be probably even more variants put into sometimes when you don't have as much incoming form. Um, do you have any disclaimers there when we kind of look at this type of field and the breaks we are coming off of? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I completely agree, right? I think that, you know, Justin Harding will have will have his backers, you know, guys are going to want to try and catch the steam of Moronk and, and Arnowski in their first wins. Don't necessarily see them being, um, you know, their win coming here, although I think Moronk has played well in the past. But, um yeah, I mean, it, it took to 35 to 1 for me to get interested just purely because of what you said, right, is that there's been a kind of break for everybody. We don't know where people are with their games. It's not like we've had much warm-up if you haven't been in, in the uh, in the Sunshine Challenge Tour events. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's probably, like you say, a week to proceed with caution. Should be a fun week. Should be a great week. Probably should see a bunch of these names up there, but um, I don't know how to plant my flag to any of them, really. Yeah, and, and with that, I mean, they're – extremely talented golfers, but when you have Otter and Oss, Adrian Murak, Dean Burmeister, Justin Harding, Thomas Dietrich, all 20 to one or lower, um, that is, you know, a difficult pill to swallow. Um, even if they are in ripe form, um, you know, if you look at the likes of even Marcus Armitage, who's been ball striking absolutely phenomenal, him getting at 28 yeah. to one, Daniel Van Tonder, a winner in Kenya last year, playing better 28 to one after he was, you know, triple digits in some of the last events. So I'm going to sneak down further uh, the odds board for I begin, but who for you is starting off your card? I'm going to take Scott Jameson. Um, ben actually put out, Ben Coley put a, a tweet out to sort of ask for people that we thought were, you know, likely to have a sneaky DP World Tour season or someone that kind of caught the eye early on. Um, I'm even kind of picking that was Ross Fisher. I think he's kind of shown sort of signs of coming back to something like his best. Um, but Scott Jameson, I think, it's just kind of been overlooked a little bit because we, we're we used to Scott Jameson, especially in South Africa and places like that, kind of popping up here, there and everywhere. But it's just the consistency, right? He's had two top 10s already in 2022. He was first 54 holes in Abu Dhabi. As we know, he kind of melted down there. Um, he was second at the 54-hole stage last time out. And I know he was six shots back of, you know, Ryan Fox. But, you know, that doesn't mean that he didn't play well. It just means Ryan Fox was actually, you know, brilliant. Uh, led after round one the week before as well. So I just think that although there's a couple of the better guys in here that maybe weren't in those Razal Kamar fields and, um, you know, I just think the drop in general class and maybe, uh, a, you know, an event that kind of, favours the ball striking and maybe takes it away from the putting just slightly. Um, I think that could help Jameson, who's, you know, playing pretty well to green. Yeah, I would dare say he's probably been the best under the radar type player so far this season um, up on that he, first page of the leaderboard. He's often. just not popular, right? Because he just doesn't win. And, you know, even, yeah. even his one win came at a shortened event. So I'm under no illusions that, you know, this is a guy that has an extremely good pedigree, but, you know, he... He lived, he's based in Florida, I think, right? So he he's you know oh, yeah. he mm -hmm. practicing all year round. It's a good time to uh, you know probably take him in his early seasons because where some people haven't been able to practice for the winter and you know I spoke to Chris Paisley before on the podcast and he said that was so important. They all went on the same. But if you get that kind of um, you know play in over December and January, where you really don't get a chance to do that in the UK. Um, you know that that's really beneficial. So I think that Jameson's probably prospering a little bit. I don't know how long he's actually been over there. It's been a, a, a little while, but. Um, I, I just think he's maybe on a bit of an upward trajectory. I think another win could be there soon, and uh, I'll take it in a, a slightly lower class field. Yeah, I watched Jameson actually uh, play in the Big Money Classic. He was over there. Um, yeah, I think he lives in Orlando, uh, right around there. Um, I'm going to yeah. venture someone who has flashed um, similar, I guess, upside in the sense where back to back top uh, three finishes for Xander Lombard. Yeah. Um, Xander Lombard, one of them was at the Rassau Kana Classics with the second leg of it, um, where he had rounds of 63 and 65, coupled by 72. So again, Ryan Fox ran away with that. But if you you know think about some of the other guys that might have put big stretches on there that might have not made that same, same impact on the leaderboard, Lombard was the top of that list for me. And then he comes out the next week again. Um, he ran into uh, the hottest golfer in the world, J.C. Ritchie. Um, but Xander Lombard, you know, comes back with a third there as well, opening 68-65 in Cape Town. So 
Uh, I'm really on a short list for him when he comes into the South Africa events uh, next week. But I think 40 to 1, I think he's opens as long as 50s, but 40s here in the States is enough for somebody, again, when I'm looking at that stretch of recent form and some clashes, um, Lombard hits those metrics for me. Yeah, and I think, you know, the knock has always been on uh, Xander Lombard that even on the Sunshine Tour, he hasn't really won. I mean, he's won, I think he won in 2018, he won one event. Um, but he's just been very consistent in terms of placing kind of most years, right? Like you look at his record, he's got a second place finish in 2016, 2017, 2019, 2021, um, two third place finishes you just alluded to there. Um Really interesting that the, the two guys came first and second back to back on on those two events, right? In South Africa, JC Ritchie and Christopher Mibbs, or whatever his name yeah. is, I've never heard of him before. Um I actually think he's been overlooked, and maybe even by myself as well. Like I just just looking at while you were talking about him, I think because he doesn't have the win equity that, that people expect, is it you know, he's kind of been factored into his price. But I think if you're especially if you're playing top fives or each ways, the 40 to one is uh, it leaves a lot to be uh a lot of value in there, I think, of the way he's playing. Yeah, and that's really all it is. Again, when we're kind of tiptoeing around the leaderboard up top, I mean, I would say Jameson, like you mentioned, and then, I mean, Pavan has been okay uh, for him after yep. getting back from injury, injury. All the guys are a little bit similar. I just think he's the longest of that bunch. I mean, Oliver Becker could have probably been similar in that way. He's as long as 40s over here. I know he's a little shorter overseas, but – um, you know, that, that trio, I think if you're just kind of planting your stake, I, I couldn't fault you any because there's similar um, reasons for all of them. But after that, I start shooting myself down into the 60s. Um, is there anybody before we get into that range that you'd like to hit on? Uh, no, I think mine is 66 to 1 still, or it certainly is over here. I think... I think it'd be interesting to see how Shabanka Sharma plays. I think he's, yes. he's been someone yep. that that has been good. I think Richie Ramsey, someone that's sort of bubbling under form, but um, yep. neither of them kind of made my card. But those would probably be two I'd think to look out for. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I guess just below that, Connor Seam is in some decent form. He's somebody who seems to have a little bit of the Sunday scaries at times, yes. um, but he he's all, you know, sorts of talented. Um, I thought he could be okay. Um, I think there was one more in the mid range. Uh, no, I guess you kind of hit on hit on that. Yeah, I, I just think we can back it up a little bit um, to to really get into form and, and sticking with, for me, similar aspect of again guys that we haven't seen all that much. I mean, twenty twenty two is we're two months in, you know, and we didn't we didn't get a December out of a good amount of these guys. So right. we're looking at some of them at the max four DP World Tour events. Um, you know, two void guys that didn't have any status to get to buy. And if you come out and you deliver in those events, I'm going to take a long, hard look at you. And, and that is Hurley Long to me. I think yeah. Hurley Long, speaking of Ben's list that you mentioned, Hurley Long is top of that for me, 18th in uh, the first um, Ross Kaima, And then, you know, he closed with the 64 there. And then he follows up with a third place finish, 67. And then once again, I believe he closed with a 64 um, in that event. So just a lot of upside that we have seen um, from him. So Hurley Long, if you take it back on the mini tours, I think it was a pro golf tour that he really did well on. He was just a winner. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's the, the mold that I like to see. Um, somebody who has, I guess, completely opposite from Xander Lombard. But if you think about it, it's not what I like to see. It's, it just gives me more confidence um, when they're on on that uh, opportunity and they've taken advantage of it in the past. So Hurley Long has done that every step of his career. So I'm ready for him to be able to challenge. And 66 is okay for me uh, to get on. I think also he's, he's, he came out, um, you know, at, before and played some European tour events, I believe, before kind of those pro golf tour wins and, you know, before he got that win on a challenge trial, I think people sort of, sort of, it just passed people by, you know, he's only 26. Like, this is a guy that's still got plenty of time ahead of him. Won the Italian Challenge Open in 2020, beat Matt Ford and Marshall Schneider, both guys that have kind of played um, some decent, you know, European tour events at this stage. Arnold Palmer Cup guys and now a trophy guy, European Amateur Team Championships, played a lot of, you know, good amateur stuff. So, plenty of stock there and he was the order of merit winner on a pro golf tour in 2019. So, um, yeah, I think, I think we maybe are just starting to see 
what we can expect from Hurley Long in the future and, you know, why not be early on him? Well, I say early, I guess he's, he's kind of been found a little bit, but, um, you know, still enough value in there before he kind of gets shortened up into 33s and 30s, I think. Yep, yep, that's kind of um, just, again, the element of the unknown a little bit with some of them on the bigger stage. So um, I'm there with that, but you found another guy who hits the board more than probably given credit to for your next pick. Yeah, so Francesco Laporta is a guy that um, people were desperate to play towards the end of last year, right? And a lot of people wanted to be on for his sure. win. Um, he, he was showing it up. I think I think you may have picked him a couple of times. I know Bradley Todd and, and Jason both did on, on our podcast. Um, it's not been great like in 2022. He missed his first two cuts, and then was 21st and 58th for the Resol Climber sort of swing. Not hitting the ball great, which is not like... Uh, Francesco Laporte's really short game has actually been better than you know his, his long game, which has been pretty reliable. But you know, second in the Dubai Championship, had a very good chance of winning there. Seventh in Portugal, sixth at Wentworth, fourth at the Italian Open, like big, big events. And you know, now we're getting him back to a golf course uh, where he finished third in 2017 on the Challenge Tour. And there's going to be a theme of my picks. It is going to be a lot based on that Challenge Tour. It does happen to also be in the 2017 year that it happened. But um, and, and there's a worry that is kind of going too much into that course and get too heavily invested in it. But when it's somewhere that they don't go ever, like it's not just a guy that you're trying to figure out, um, you know, whether they've got any course for against the field. It's no one plays here generally for, for five years, four years. I do want guys that have been there before played in similar strength fields have, have shown some life in better fields than this. And uh, I think Francesco Laporta fits up. Them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think, the peak Laporta is, you know, one of the better challenge tour grads that we have seen. Um, Matt would have compared, he had a better run probably than Santiago Tario Baum had. Um, and, but it's, it's crazy how quickly they get forgotten after that graduation at times. I mean, Laporta I, I was think, dominant. I think as well, like I've been really keen on Matthew Pavon earlier in this year and like this, this was at like 250, 300 to one. And now it's suddenly he's 35 to one. And and Laporta's kind of still hanging out in this, this sort of weird price. Like, you know, Johannes Veerman's obviously got his first victory, 20 to one. Like, you know, I don't see it for these guys. You know, you, you go to, to Xander Lombard as your earliest pick of 40s. That's twice the price of, you know, Veerman and Dietrich and, and people like that. That, yes, they're all, you know, very good. And I know you're you're taking the place in terms of each way value into it when you're considering these top talents. But, um, you know, they're not winning, right? A, a higher clip. So um, I'll take a guy that's still got some upside, but this still means a lot too. Like he, he needs to get a win and, you know, okay, this won't be the ideal field for him, but I think that, that he'll be happy to get it done and, and use it as a building block. Yeah. Yep. I uh, I don't fault you at all there. Um, as we get in through this, I mean, this mid-range, I, guess, I don't consider this mid-range. This We're starting to get a little bit of a long shot um, yeah, yeah. area you know good each ways for all of these guys and this is where majority of our card going back to what our, our earlier statements where majority of our card does lie in the 66 and beyond even 90 100 plus um we're going to be talking through uh quite a few guys as we get here um and even guys that we left out frederick lacroix i think he's one of the best uh graduates so far to kick off the year i mean marcus uh Hikilda. our, our danish run yep Hikilda, <laughs> marcus Hakilda. At 80 to one. I mean, he's still ripe right there. I mean, we get to see, this is funny though. We get to see uh, Scaper or Shaper, Jaden Trey uh, come play, but he's got enough uh, name value to him already that he's, he's 90 to one. When if it wasn't that name, you'd probably see him 200 plus uh, to one. Yeah. But um, he's got all the talent in the world. But there is another golfer in 90 to one that I am going to be moving forward with. And, you know, we, you talk recent form, you talk a, a golfer just gaining confidence off of playing. You've mentioned the challenge tour, you know, the sunshine tour, those multiple co-sanctioned events we just had. Um, I understand the class difference in, in that. I also understand the class difference in, in getting steps lower. But I also think for a golfer like Marcus Kinholt, who had a lengthy absence from golf with epilepsy, um, you know, had a tough time back from that, you know, e even greater, but also we've seen him take down big dogs. We've seen him, you know, what the British masters. I mean, that was uh, five, 
was it a playoff there or he birdied the last hole? Either way, yeah, it was but he, he beat he beat Wallace, Pedro, Pepper, and Rafa McIntyre by uh, one shot. So, yeah. um, you know that's that's really impressive, like you say. And um, I'm sure you're going to go back into the, to the form. But when you look at that British Masters field, that is far exceeds what we're going to be seeing this week. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And and you look at what he did last. So two weeks, there's been the Golf Star Winter Series in the Nordic Golf League, which is kind of his home area in a sense, but I believe actually they were in Spain. Um, if I went on the website, right. But sometimes the translation can be weird. Um, but he was ninth in the first one. And that ninth, you know, maybe you have a little rustiness with the opening 73, then he went 68, 67. And then he goes 69, 65, 70 to win uh, the next week. So five consecutive rounds playing quite well, um, lit it up with birdies. Uh, and, you know, Again, it's not, it's not a, as of now, you know, understanding these the class of players, it is significantly down there. I mean, John Axelson was the other one that I recognized who won yeah. the first event. But um, I just think it, it provides confidence. It provides, uh, you know, something for him to, to go off of. He had a 12th place finish the last time he played at this course in 17, and that was a strong 54-hole finish for him there. Again, a long time ago, but... I think if you combine a little bit of things, 90 to one and the talent we know he has, I'm rooting for him. So let's hope that he can uh, find something this week. I think also, like you say, is that, okay, it's a different class and, you know, a win there doesn't necessarily mean anything, but winning's winning. Like I think if, if it's someone that, if, if you were trying to sell me on someone that hasn't won on the, on the DB World Tour, hasn't contended on the DB World Tour, um, that just was just a random player from that field in 90s one i'd say you you just get him kind of suck it into a bit of recent form right but this is a guy like you say won the british masters second the ned bank uh which is a very good field third at qatar 10th at the bmw pga 12th at the bmw pga so just been very very solid and you know every time a european player plays well they get touted for Ryder cups he was touted for Ryder cups when he sort of won that british masters like He's no different, you know, big, tall, you know, big profiled player. And, you know, I think, you know, I think he was 12th here in 2017 as well. So everything to like about him at 90 to 1. Yeah. Yep. Completely agree with you. Um, you know, you're kind of going into the aspect, I believe, with your next pick here, uh, a top tier talent when it comes to South African golf. Um Golfer who, if you had to make me guess his age, I would think Yax Kruwich is like 45. I compare him to Darren Fickard all the time because they're always coming in these events. I don't even think Kruwich is 30 yet, is he? Uh, I think he I think he might be 30. I, I, I don't know is the answer to that. Um, he is 29 years of age. He was born right. in 1992. So... Um, yeah, and I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that Jack Kroisovic is out of form. Um, you know, we kind of talk, uh, we talk, Jeff Feinberg talks on Pat's show about kind of betting the ceiling of a goal for betting for their peak. And we know what that is, right, with Jack Kroisovic. You, you mentioned earlier, he was very good in South Africa, very good at Kenya, back-to-back top five finishes uh, at Karen Country Club last year. Um, you know, and... Tied seventh here in 2017. Don't want to put too much stock into it, but this is 90 to 100. It's one about a golfer that just plays this region well, plays this level of field well. Um, and, and I'm happy just to try and um, bet him because, you know, if, if he was in any sort of form, this would be a 35, 40 to 1 bet. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Kruitz in this kind of field, yeah, always gains popularity. Um, that's a good number. Um, I'm going to lump in my next two selections together. Because they're golfers, um, one I've bet now three weeks in a row, and one I've now bet three years in a row. So um, if we start with Yannick Paul, uh, I think the more data we're getting, Yannick Paul is potentially the best ball striker of the entire Challenge Tour class of this year. We've, we have 10 rounds to, to work with, laser rounds. You know, he's been really good off the tee, really good approach. Um, and, and that is what I'm going to rely on, I guess, when you have the numbers of what they are. Um, I don't think his finishes are reflective of, you know, what he has shown um, from an upside standpoint. I mean, what, 33rd was that last time when he was third and then 14th? And that's 66. 
opening round, I think he lost strokes putting. I mean, we talked about it the day after, yeah. um, and he was, you know, right there. In the thick of it. So I'm going to keep going back to Yannick Well at 100. And then, like we said off the top of the show, Guido and Kenya, it's a match made in heaven. If he doesn't perform this week, Tom, I will take a long look in the mirror and just ask myself, can you keep backing a golfer who hasn't finished inside the top 60, you know, since 2021? And I'm going to think about it. I mean, probably there's no way I'm going to stop betting him, but I'm going to at least consider it. For, I can answer the question for you. Yeah, but uh, I mean, at that point, he's going to be like 250 to one, Tom, and it's going to be like, okay, here's some lunch money. <laughs> I think. I think I actually, when I first read your selections, I didn't think he was there, and I was like, wow, I got through to him. We've made yeah. it. He realizes it's not the same golf course, and then there he was, sandwiched in between uh, Yannick Paul and Marcus Kinholt. Um, Yannick Paul is, is a better bet at the at the <laughs> prices, um, but I can understand the sentimentality of, of betting Guido, yeah, especially I mean, it's going to come good, right? Yeah. And his around the green game is so much better than what it was two years ago or three years ago. Um, That's so always maybe, the way, though, isn't he's it? better suited. Maybe he's better suited for this course now, Tom. He's maybe. He's graduated. You know? Yeah, that, that could be it. It always seems to be the way that the weakness kind of comes back and then everything else deserts them. And, you know, we don't like to see that. Um my next selection was Adrian Sadie, who I think is someone that everyone kind of gave up on a little bit too early. Uh, he was second in this field, uh, in this course in 2017. Uh, he was tied seventh in a dimension by day to two starts ago. And he made his last four cuts uh, in 2021 on the uh, DB World Tour, kind of spread out because I, th- I think his status is a little bit wonky, right? But he was seventh at Crans, 15th at the Dutch Open, um, and all just pretty impressive results. And this is a guy that, you know, we've said about the having the form in South Africa recently against guys that have not played for X amount of weeks. Um, he's got that. He's got the the course form. He's got the game to go well around here. I just thought the kind of 141 number on Adrian Sadio was pretty impressive. Yeah, he was somebody that we were in on uh, late last year, I believe it was, where yeah. he showed, showed a good amount of life. Um, I'm cool with that. I think for me, um, without talking through uh, a million of the golfers kind of as we go through the bottom, because, I mean, you can make a, a case of a lot of, uh, you know, Sammy Velamaki has finally made a couple cuts. Um, I was lowest round in forever. I was interested there. I was like kind of Norgard Moeller, Hugo Leon with his plan. Um, but if we keep going down and we, we get back into this recent form, conversation and again it's not everything by any means but ross mcgowan going uh fourth place just last week um 67 68 67 68 um and the week prior you know he made the cut nothing great but what stood out was ross was exceptional with his iron game um we're working on sunshine tour data you know digging into it a little bit tour tips kind of put some out there for us and based off some statistical form i mean mcgowan actually had two really good weeks from that but last week was was strong mcgowan popped um what that would have been portugal when he won perhaps um uh, trying to think where wasn't it the event that he beat uh he beat laurie Cantor. um uh, I, italy. I don't know italy was. the italian open that was there it is okay uh had the right golfer but wrong place but yes i mean mcgowan has popped out of nowhere multiple times um, so a little bit of life going into that 200 to one. I think that's very worth uh, an each way at that bargain price. Yeah, I think so. I think it's one of, he's just a guy that pops up, right? And uh, as we always say here, you don't need to be finding too many good things about them to, to throw some money at them at this range. You'll notice that I have actually skipped my drug in Oliver Wilson this week. He's sitting there at 175 to one. He's not going to be picked. Uh, Ewan Ferguson, 200 to one was interesting. Um, and then you've got a couple of guys here that, you know, we've we've talked about it multiple times. Richard Mansell, two hundred to one. Renato Paratori, two hundred to one, is a guy that you know we all kept trying to chase the victory of. You know, not so long ago, kind of like forty to one. So um, I know that form is everything, and ball striking is not there, and, and things like that. But it's yeah, you know, it's a guy that's is class, and you know, yes, okay, he's missed his three cuts so far in twenty twenty two, but he was thirty second at the Joburg before the end of the year. Um, you know, that there's no reason to think that he can't get his form back. Yeah, I think another one I would put into that category, Ivan Quintero Gutierrez. Um, if you looked at a couple week of challenge tour, I think he was 19th and then 6th, I believe it was. Um, 
the golden era for those that were really into strokes gain data early on when Guido was on his ball striking run, this was right when it came about Cantu, Cantero Gutierrez used to have the greatest approach numbers I have ever seen and the worst putting. And we came to find out it was a glitch from the European tour data. I used to think this kid was going to be, you know, the next Tiger Woods and he would just miss three foot putts. Like he would probably three putt from there, <laughs> but he's finally found a little life. He did have a 35th place at Kenya last time he came here, which was really good for him. But yeah, 19th and sixth in Mystica last week, rooting for Ivan, probably was frequent in DraftKings uh, versus playing. Yeah, I will quickly wrap through mine because I know you're very excited to get to your uh, long shot this week. Uh, Hayden Porteous is 500 to 1. Uh, this is a guy that's won twice on the DP World Tour. Um, you know, not, not many people can say that in this field. Uh, he was 10th at the Dimension Data three starts ago now, where he was third at the halfway stage, shot a third round 77. And he does have that in his locker, right? He's kind of wild of fatigue because he's so long. Um, but he shot a 67 to open last week and he was sitting in 17th place and shot a 73 and missed the cut. And that's just indicative of some really good scoring elsewhere, right? You know, not often you go from 17th to miss cut with a 73. So um, I can kind of overlook that. And he won this event, albeit at Karen Country Club, uh, back in 2015, I think it was, which is obviously a, a decent amount of time ago. But as I say, 500 to 1 two-time winner on DP World Tour, one in this part of the world, if not this golf course, and, uh, well, the event itself. So I'm pretty happy with 500 to 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're starting to tempt some fate there at 500 to 1. But, Tom, we're, we're getting back. We are we are here for our long shot play of the week. It's been – I haven't done it yet this this whole 2022. I'm proud of myself. You've been restrained, yeah. Been, yeah, these, these Apart from Guido. Ones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. That hurt, Tom. That hurt a little bit. Um, <laughs> But if we if we dial into, you know, we we talk challenge tour forum, and then I then I let it go a little bit to the Nordic Golf League forum. We're here to talk Safari Tour forum. Tom, the Kenya Golf League, known as the Safari Golf Tour, has one of the most elite runs of golfers you'll you'll ever see currently happening right now. Robson Shinhoi, he is twenty five hundred to one. All right, the literal last name on the board. And he did play in both of the Kenya events last year. Missed both cuts. I went in, did a little digging. He sounds much more confident this time around. I found some quotes even, Tom, saying he's ready to make the cut. He's ready to compete. And he actually, um, the Kenyan sponsors, there's four Kenya, I think, guys that got invitations they are all, there's an additional prize pool for how they finish if they make the weekend. They have motivation to finish, make the cut, top 40, 20, 10 um, out there. But he has won four out of their eight golf events since fall of 2021, including one at this same golf club just last uh, month. I think or actually two weeks ago. He went 64, 66, 70, 69 this course. He had a 67 in the opening round of Karen Country Club last year. So he does have the ability to go low. Again, these golfers, who knows? Who knows at all? I'm, I'm mainly going to find ourselves the top 40. That's going to be some decent odds. We're hoping the, the news doesn't go, go wild overnight here and everybody and their mother are betting Robs and Chinhoy. But um, if they are, the top 40 might be reduced. However, if that gets juicy for us, Tom, you can just make the cut, play a little well. I think if there's enough in the tank. And I'm going to show off some tweets later this week. The guy is electric. If you remember... At Monday qualifier, uh, in case of the Monday one, um, if you look at his tweet, there was a golfer who was running around the green celebrating one of his wins. That's our guy this week. He's got some funny tweets. Um, so I think there's enough for 2,500 to one, Tommy. You don't need much on that to have a good payday. No, you could uh, probably have less than your your Starbucks on that and have a very good day. Um, I will say, just to, just to put the dampener on it, is that I quite like looking at... Um, the official world golf rankings to see if uh, a player is improving and you know does, what he's been doing on the safari golf tour suggests that he is uh he's had 10 starts total in his career uh which are actually been ranked on the world golf rankings he has missed eight cuts and uh his best finish is 38 for the zimbabwe open in 2018 so just to just to temper expectations i know people are going to go wild that you've made the case he's running around like a crazy man on the greens you know, everything points to a win 
right? Yes, I think he's due. That's the thing. Uh, exactly that right. that is it, right? That is what I am saying. You know, he's he is the one thousand six hundred eighty fifth ranked golfer in the world. He is due a bad. victory. That's, that's not that's that is not bad considering what I have just told you. He has made two cuts in ten starts on the world golf rankings. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, look. All joking aside, because I, I just like to be that typical British person that puts a dampener on things. Um, there's plenty to, to work yeah. on, right? Win of the golf course, safari tour. I don't know how competitive it is, but he's certainly making uh, the best of it. And uh, he's parlaying that into some starts in the Kenya Opens. And if he does well, then uh, you'll be laughing at me next week. Yeah, I told Pat if he wins, we're all going to the headquarters. Oh. So you're up. Oh, yeah, you're I'm up. ready. I tell you, I will. I will... I don't know what I will do. I will recreate the, the celebrations uh, and send it into send it into the show if yes. uh, if he wins because I will join you in a bet. I mean, normally like on on the Betfair Exchange, I put out a tweet that says like who's the most likely thousand to one golfer to win, and that's the maximum odds that you can bet. And he is twice that amount to win. So yeah. um, you know that's it's pretty exciting. I can I can feel it in the boy, you know, your heart, you got Sep Stracker in there, shot a 67 in the Magical Kenya Open last year, you know, missed the cut by two. He's trending. Hey, amen. Amen. I love it, Tom. Let's uh rip off our cards again for the week here as we close out. Um, who are you on? Yeah, so Scott Jameson for me at 35 to one, followed by Francesco Laporta at 60. Six to six, I think. Uh, yeah, Kroisovic 90 to one, Adrian Sadier 140 to one, and Hayden Porteous at 500 to one is my exotic bet, which pales in comparison to yours. Yes, child's play there, Tom. But we'll go with <laughs> on my end Xander Lombard 40 to one, Hurley, Hurley Long 66, Marcus Kinholt 90, Guido Migliazzi back in Kenya 100 to one, Yannick Paul 100 to one, Ross McGowan 200 to one, and Robson Chinhoy 2500 to one. We're going to ladder that baby up T5, T10, T20, T40 on Robson. Uh, hit it all every way you can get it out here. Thank you all for listening to a magical week at the Magical Kenya Open. Hope you all enjoy and take care.